All right, last time we were talking about um, BLAST. And if you remember the principal idea, we have a query string, and here we have a database of strings. And BLAST would really like to do local alignment, Smith-Waterman type alignment of the query string against every string in the database. And there continues to be papers and studies that say that that's more sensitive and selective and just overall better than uh, uh, other things that are out there. But uh, with today's technology, that just isn't feasible. Uh, even though we can do Smith-Waterman alignment between two long sequences, and if you're one of a few users and you have a, uh, an expensive machine like the Time Logic machine, you can actually use Smith-Waterman. But in the kind of uh, situation that exists today, let's say we're NCBI, processes many, many queries for many individuals, and uh, the cost has to be kept down, that just isn't feasible. So BLAST and other uh, methods came along uh, about 10 years ago to try to do very rapid kinds of um, alignment uh, tasks um, that might uh, get something that's similar to what um, Smith Waterman would deliver. And the basic idea, remember, is that we find, uh, in the first step, you find the k-mers in the query sequence. And the, uh, the length of the, of the k-mer depended on whether this was DNA or protein. And then you hash them. You put these into a hash. And uh, one thing that I, that I mentioned last time but didn't explain uh, is that you can put strings into a hash very rapidly. And more importantly, when you uh, index, when you use a, a key to look up something in a hash, that's done very rapidly as well. Okay? In, if you take a computer science course such as uh, 110 or some other ones, they explain various hash methods and uh, uh, how to implement hashes and so on. The one thing you might uh, know or learn, pay attention to at this point, to appreciate some of the issues in hashing is that although hashing gives you very fast retrieval, it actually uses up a lot of space, uses a lot of memory in order to implement hashing. And uh, uh, that actually leads to one of the decisions that was uh, made in BLAST, which was to hash the k that come from the query, whereas if you think about it, and somebody asked me this last time, why don't they hash the k in the database? Okay, that would give you much more rapid lookup than hashing the cameras in the query. But uh, my guess as to why they don't do that is that that ends up taking much too much space. So you hash these cameras, okay, and then in step three, you um, look at each camer. <coughs> in the database, let's just call it D, and using the hash, you determine whether or not there's a camer in a particular string here, let's say here, ABC. Well, of course, that's not legal, but anyway. Um, AQQ, whether that threemer in this case is anywhere in this query sequence. And if it is, then you extend outwards left and right uh, to see what you can find, <coughs> exact matches, or if you're using a scoring matrix, uh, a high scoring region in here, which uh, matches well in terms of score, may not be exact match, but matches well in terms of score, uh, 
with something here. And you can see that this is a kind of um, approximation to local alignment. It's finding a, an interval in the query sequence and an interval in uh, some sequence in the database which has a high level of similarity. Not similarity computed by dynamic programming, because that takes too long, but similarity just by finding a seed here, looking outwards, and making sure that the, the total score, all the characters here, or the characters here, making sure that total score is reasonably high. Now, what's reasonably high? How far out do you look before you stop? And so on. All those are engineering details that people who develop BLAST and, and as they change it over, the over time, they pay a great deal of attention to those things so that they get speed and, and they still get accuracy. Uh, and and there's, you know, there's no way for us to kind of uh, in, invent what those parameters should be. That, uh, was a great, was, that was the result of a great deal of work that, that people at BLAST did. So you look at each camera in D and uh, Use the hash to see if the camer is in Q. If so, look left, look right, then cross, etc. Okay? Look both ways before you do anything else. Um, all right, That's what, this is just a review of what we did last time, so I'm doing this rather quickly. I left with the question of why is this more efficient? Why is this faster than doing dynamic programming? Well, the, remember, what's, what's the um, number of operations that dynamic programming would do Let's say the query string is of length n, and the collection of all of the uh, strings in the database has length m. So if you do Smith-Waterman, something like that, dynamic programming, when you look at the query against the first string, the total work there, the total number of operations is going to be proportional to the product of the lengths of those two strings, and then the same for the second one, it's going to be proportional to the product of the lengths of those two strings, and so on. So over uh, the entire database, if you did Smith-Waterman uh, of the query sequence against each one of the sequences in the database, uh, how many operations does that involve? It's what? Yeah, OK, so this would be uh, dy dynamic programming implies something proportional to uh, n times m operations. And as we've said before, if we're talking about two strings, that's not so bad. But uh, when you're talking about a whole database of strings, that's too much. But BLAST, as I've described it so far, how many operations are involved, roughly? Yeah, about M. Um, well, it, it's, it's a little bit harder to say because it depends on how frequently you find camers. But uh, these, these operations here, putting things into a hash, there's about N of them. Okay, I've said putting something into a hash is very quick and looking up, retrieving from a hash is very quick. So we're going to take that as a single operation, even though uh, it's probably more than just one. But in the end, we're always talking about things being proportional to. So if instead of it being just a single operation, it's 10 operations, that's still uh, a small constant number of operations as opposed to something that grows quadratically. So here, the number of operations to find all the k-mers and put them into the hash is proportional to n, proportional to the length. Then when you go over here, you're looking at all these k-mers, and there are about m of them because that's the total length of this. And if each lookup into a hash, is, is, we're thinking of that as, as something that takes only a constant number of operations, then um, at least for 
for steps uh, one, two, and three, we're talking about n plus m operations. Okay, so you took this little symbol here and turned it 90 degrees. It makes a big difference. The plus the multiplication becomes a plus, and it's a, uh, a, a tremendous reduction in the number of operations. Well, then of course you have to. Well, this is use, use the hash to see if the k is in there. But the looking left and right, that uh, takes you some time as well. And whether or not, how much that adds up to really depends on how often you find a, uh, a kamer in there. And that's why you want to pick the length of the kamer or the, uh, the threshold of identity that is required so that on the, on the one hand, uh, you don't end up doing this left and right search from every kamer in here because that would defeat the whole, I mean, that would, that would just add a lot of work and defeat the whole purpose of being fast. On the other hand, you don't want this k to be so large that you, in the end, miss uh, good local alignment segments that, uh, uh, that you would like to find. Okay, so this portion... Uh, the amount of work, of work, or number of operations, depends on a good choice of K and other details of BLAST. But they, they have engineered it so that this portion is very fast because you don't uh, find very many kamers unless, in fact, uh, this isn't a segment that's, that's of some use. And by the way, this, this whole piece in here is called an HSP, a high-scoring pair. Okay. All right, so that's why this thing is so fast. Now, let me add a little bit more detail uh, that increases the accuracy in reality, at least for protein, that's well, true for DNA too. Um, so actually, let me talk about DNA first. So imagine this is DNA, okay? Maybe make it look more like DNA. And I mentioned last time that the K in DNA is more like 10, not 3. 3 is more like what happens in protein. But they want to allow some level of mismatch, okay? Uh, they want the seed not to have to be an, ident an identical match, but allow some level of mismatch. And the way they implement that in BLAST is that they take the kamer in this little example, three, and they might want to tolerate one mismatch. So if you tolerate one mismatch and you have three positions, then in each position, you uh, conceive of the other three nucleotides that that might be. So ACC with one mismatch, for example, is CCC or TCC or GCC. Okay? So for a, a three-mer, how many, uh, how many other three-mers are one mismatch away from this particular three-mer? How many? Twelve. Twelve? How did you get to twelve? Okay, four times three. In other words, three positions, four possibilities in each one. That's not quite right, but it's close. Other suggestions? Nine, yeah. Nine is the right answer because uh, we want to just be one mismatch away from this one. So we're going to either have a mismatch in the first position, but then we can't have it in the other two, or in the second position, but then we can't have it in the first or third, or in the third position, but then we can't have it uh, in the first two. So for each position we point at, there are three other three-mers of interest. So... This set um, of 
three MERS, which are either identical to this or within one mismatch away, this is called a family or a neighborhood. Sorry, find the neighborhood. of each. So what BLAST really does is it finds the k-mers in Q, it finds the neighborhood of each one, and then it hashes the entire, all the, all the k-mers, all the three-mers in this case, that are in that neighborhood. And then it, it, um, it uses those when we scan through uh, the database sequences. So this allows a seed to uh, actually have uh, some level of mismatching. So you can see how that increases the uh, sensitivity of the lookup because in a local match, in the, in the um, interval that's taken in the local alignment, you don't have necessarily uh, long stretches of uh, perfect matching. Yeah, question? Okay, in the original BLAST, BLAST did not allow any spaces. Okay, there were no gaps at all. Now, that's the original BLAST, which was from 1991 to 1997. BLAST 2 is also called gapped BLAST. So what would you imagine that they did or made as an improvement in BLAST 2 over the original BLAST? They allow some gaps, and I'll explain in a minute how they do that. Okay, but the original blast that I'm describing now, uh, in the HSPs, there are no, there are no spaces at all. Okay, everything is contiguous. And one of the, um, the the most important points about blast and uh, why it became so widely used, in addition to its speed, is the fact that blast would uh, report the hits it found, there's what, what sequences in the database it thought were related to the query sequence, but it would also provide some level of um, estimation of the significance of those hits. And it did it in a slightly different way than I think originally than it was done today. Today, each hit is accompanied by an E value. So each, each hit, and again, what do I mean by a hit? I mean a, uh, a sequence that is reported by, the, um, by BLAST. How many people have actually, at this point, uh, actually used BLAST and seen some of the BLAST output? Okay, so in your lab, I think you were supposed to do that, work through the tutorial. And you, you'll see when you do that, that BLAST um, shows you the query sequence and then it shows you uh, in order of the quality of the score uh, the, the different hits it's found and shows you those segments in different colors, uh, the, the high quality segments and the lower quality segments in different colors um, aligned with the query sequence. And I actually don't know whether BLAST really does this or not, but I've, uh, I, th I think it does. When it, um, it shows you the alignment, I mean, so, so it's found a, a few candidates uh, of uh, a few hits, maybe 50, 100. You can specify how many you want out of that database, the databases of hundreds of thousands or millions. And therefore, it has the time now to do a full Smith-Waterman alignment of the query sequence with each of the 100, say, or 50 sequences that it's pulled out. And uh, again, I'm not absolutely certain that it does it, but it's my belief at the moment, and if they don't do it, they should. Uh, after they found those good 100 candidates, they uh, might do a Smith-Waterman alignment between the query and that particular sequence that's found, because then, then you're seeing uh, a little more accurately what that full relationship is. It's also sometimes advised when you're doing local alignment uh, and you find two sequences that seem to be similar because of local alignment, it's advised that you then do uh, 
global alignment between the two because the local alignment has found regions of, of high similarity, and that's what convinced you that these two sequences were, were related. Um, but there may be some relationship throughout the entire sequence the global alignment, that the global alignment might uh, illustrate and pick up, but it would, be, it would have been too weak if you just used global alignment to find, to find that these two sequences were related. But once you feel that they are, you want to see the relationship over their entire uh, lengths or, or find that there isn't really a good relationship over their entire lengths. So again, this just illustrates the idea that you use something like BLAST and there are other programs like it, FASTA, for example, uh, as a kind of a filter to tell you to find some sequences that are of greatest interest. But um, once you've done that, you, might, you generally want to look much more deeply into the relationship. And I think actually that's even in the, in the BLAST tutorial, if I remember right. Or there's, there's a section of the BLAST tutorial I didn't have you read called post-processing. So you might want to read that next, where it advises you to do things like this, um, these additional alignments uh, of various types, once you've found two strings of interest. All right, but I want to get on to this E value. So what is the uh, E value? This is probably uh, the most misunderstood aspect of BLAST. And I know I've asked this question in each of the past two midterms or finals, or midterm and finals. Uh, I think in one year, maybe both years, I asked it on both the midterm and the final because I didn't like the answer I got yet on the midterm. The question being, what does this E value explain it, and what does it do, and why is it important? So. Um, BLAST, BLAST returns uh, a score for each hit. Now, the actual score that BLAST uses is a little bit mysterious. Uh, I'm not quite going to go into it. But for the purposes of our discussion, you can think of a score as being the same kind of thing we got from alignments, alignment technology we've been talking about. You have, in the case of protein, a substitution matrix. BLAST is finding a uh, local uh, a region, an HSP, that's, that's um, related to the query sequence or similar to the query sequence. And so you have, um, and it doesn't allow any, any spaces or any gaps, so you have a correspondence between characters in the query, at least in that local interval, and in the, uh, in the hit that's being reported. And you can evaluate those with the uh, scoring matrix and come up with a score that's reported. The actual score that uh, BLAST reports is something called a normalized score. And uh, I'm not going to go into that. But the point is that it does return a score for each hit. And then it sorts these according to uh, the uh, size of the score. The, the higher, the better. So. But then it also reports an E value. OK, so the E value is roughly this. It is the expected number of hits. Uh, OK, so BLAST returns a score. Let's say it has returned a score S for a particular hit. It's the expected number of hits of score S or better um, if the query sequence were um, well put this way if D is a database of random sequences, of the same size and composition as the real database. 
So you have a real database, D, but imagine taking every sequence in there and just permuting it. So in the end, you have the same number of sequences. So it's the same size. You have the same composition in terms of DNA or amino acids, but the sequences are now randomized. They're, they're not biological sequences. They're, they're just uh, garbage, in a sense. And if you ran the query, if you ran BLAST with um, your query sequence Q against this database, you will get some kind of best score, or you'll get some score. And you can therefore, it, it's well defined to talk about the number of hits of score S or better uh, in this randomized database, okay? Uh, same composition with the real database, and of course you use, use the same Q. Now we, talk, we need to talk a little bit about how, how BLAST actually gets this E. This is really conceptual, the way I'm putting it here. It doesn't actually do this, although some other programs do things like this. You can literally, if you have the time and the inclination, take your database D, permute all the sequences just as I described, and, uh, and run this query again. And you can do it many times and get out a, an average of those. Uh, you see how many hits have a score S or better each time you randomize, take an average, and you get this expected number, okay? Now, why do we, uh, even before I tell you anything more about how, how BLAST actually does it, and it doesn't do it the way I just said, it doesn't do it because it hasn't got the time. You know, BLAST is supposed to be fast. It doesn't want to uh, uh, run the query Q against the database 10,000 times each time permuting the database in order to get a good average, right? It wants to run it once, okay? But let's just imagine we actually do it this way and we get out those statistics. You should be able to tell me now and later if I ask on the midterm or the final, what's the use of E? How do you want to use it in this whole uh, enterprise of looking up uh, looking for good matches, looking for, for sequences in the database that might be biologically related to the query sequence. What's E good for? The lower the value, the better. The lower the better. Yeah. Why? Okay, it was suggested here the lower the E value, the better. How many people uh, agree with that one? How many people disagree with that? How many people have no opinion? Okay. Yeah, the lower the better. Uh, the lower the better. You see, if you're finding, if you have a hit which has a score, and that score could easily have been observed I, even if you had random sequences in the database. If you have a, uh, a large expected number of hits of that quality S or better even in the database, and this database is just junk, it's just random, uh, you're really sticking your neck out to conclude that your particular hit has some biological meaning. Again, it goes back to this philosophy we've talked about before, that if the thing that you're observing could easily be explained by just random happenstance, then you better have some very strong other evidence to think that you're finding something significant there. So if this E value is large, um, then uh, People don't feel confident in uh, believing that what they f the hits they found have some biological meaning. So you generally want that to be lower. You want something that looks very different from what you would find randomly. 
Now, what's, how low is low? What, what should you pick? 10, 1, 1 in 1,000? Five. Ten to the minus five. I don't know some that go ten to the minus three. Yeah, there's a default value in Blast, I think. For um, uh, I mean, you can set this and not even report anything unless the e value is below there. And I don't know what they what the default is, but t ten to the minus five, ten to the minus three, something like that. Ten to the minus three means one in a thousand. Um, so that if you did this you know, a, a thousand times, then you might get a hit um, uh, that was uh, just because it's random association. Actually, I don't even know. You know that's pretty stringent, actually, um, because what, what kind of um, confidence intervals do people usually require uh, to publish papers? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Um, you know, again, in, in kind of statistical tests, you have a probability that uh, what you found is is there just due to random noise, and uh, I think people like one in one in twenty is uh, is somehow acceptable. Point you know, point oh five uh, confidence level or you know something like that. But blast usually what people pick in blast is much more stringent than that. One in 10,000, something like that. Okay, the lower the better. Um, but it really depends on your um, tolerance. Of type one or type two errors. Now, I don't remember what type 1 is or type 2 is, but everybody here has taken a statistics class more recently than I have. So what's a type 1 error? Well, anyway, one's a false positive, one's a false negative. It doesn't matter which is which. Okay? So, you know, BLAST is a tool. If uh, when you get 100 hits back, you have to go into the lab and spend $10,000 and a month looking at each one. You probably don't want uh, a lot of false negatives. You want anything reported to you to be really significant. And so you're going to make your, you're going to pick uh, the E value that you're going to accept to be very small. On the other hand, if this is just a filter somehow, you, you get a list of, of sequences. And all it means is you're going to spend the afternoon looking at those sequences and, and retrieving uh, some additional information from GenBank or uh, PubMed or something about each one of them. And by some other cheap, very cheap criteria, you can somehow decide which of these uh, is of value to you. Then maybe you don't care that there's 100 or 200 or 500 of these. What you really care about is that you don't miss that one sequence in there that gives you the Nobel Prize. You know, there's some association that um, uh, is very valuable, and you, better, you don't want to miss it. So BLAST you know, has a very precise definition of these E values, and they're very valuable. But you know, don't lose sight. Don't become uh, totally slaves to the E value. Uh, pick it depending on what the larger context and the larger task is at hand. Okay. So this, this statement of, of what the E value is, if you remember this uh, as you leave the class, that will be very uh, useful. I'm going to try to show you later on uh, how BLAST computes these E values. Yeah. No, S is a score. Yeah, what kind of score is that? Okay, the question is, what's, what is the score S? And I, I, I told you earlier, it's a little bit complicated in BLAST. It's what they, they call a normalized score. But for our purposes of this class, we can just think of it as the same as a score of the kind that we had 
when we talked about alignment. There we talked about value. But the point is you have, you have an HSP, and you can evaluate the score or the quality of it by looking at uh, what the corresponding characters are and looking up their values in the uh, substitution matrix. Some of these are matches, and you get a match value. Some of them are mismatches. You get a mismatch value, and you sum those up. And that gives you a score. It's not actually literally what BLAST does, but it's going to be uh, good enough for our purposes. It's kind of like the similarity score we've got. Yeah, right, right, like a similarity score. It should be an integer, right? Something else talk about is the time to power of No, no, no. The expected number doesn't have to be an integer. You imagine that you permute D many times. Okay, so you permute the database. You do your query. Uh, you run BLAST with the query against a particular permuted database. And you find out how many hits you have of score S or better. That's an integer. Okay? But then you do it again. Okay? And you keep doing it many, many times, 10,000 times, 100,000 times, and you take an average over all of those. And that's why, that's why you get an expected number. I mean, okay? And it doesn't, it, it doesn't have to be, well, certainly doesn't, isn't normally going to be an integer. Okay, so I will get into BLAST statistics a little bit, uh, where they get these E uh, values from, certainly because they don't actually do this kind of, um, they don't actually do the permutations. Although, they, to some extent, um, in some of the steps, they would do this offline. They would not do this um, for each query, but they do some of these permutations and studies of um, uh, score distributions offline uh, with random queries. And so they build up statistics that, uh, that show you what that looks like and then can, uh, can use that to some extent to do the E values. But in the original BLAST, this was actually an analytical uh, value. And in BLAST, uh, GAP BLAST, they also have, uh, uh, they also don't actually do the permuting, uh, certainly not online. So let me tell you a little bit about GAP BLAST or BLAST 2. And that's the BLAST that's in there today. So actually, before I get onto that, going back to the very first lecture where I said that all along the way to developing tools that we use, people had to make compromises, uh, simplifications. And here is exactly one uh, such illustration. You'd really like, ideally, to do Smith-Waterman, but it's not practical to do it in this context, in the database searching context. So you invent these HSPs instead of uh, real local intervals of local alignment. And the question that I told you you should think about uh, in the first lecture, but think about it all throughout the course, is uh, in making these compromises, have uh, people thrown away uh, the biological value that they were, they were actually shooting for? Okay. So it's something you um, should think about in this context. If you use your seed, even with some mismatches, Oh, and by the way, when it's protein, so I illustrated neighborhoods using DNA and mismatches. When it's protein, okay, it's not the number of mismatches that limits the size of the neighborhood, but it's the uh, deviation using a scoring matrix from the kamer, okay? So if you have a kamer, it's three or four characters. A single mismatch could have a, depending on what kind of mismatch it is, could have a different change in uh, overall value depending on uh, the scoring matrix that's used and what particular mismatch you're talking about. 
So in BLAST, they set a threshold for how far away uh, you're permitted to be. So a really uh, uh, odd substitution uh, wouldn't be made uh, in, in the amino acid alphabet, but similar substitutions, for example, valine for leucine or isoleucine would be made. Okay. But at any rate, um, uh, so you have, you have BLAST, which uses these neighborhoods and CAMERS. You have to think to yourself, have they what have they lost in comparison to using actual Smith-Waterman? And people observed that there were uh, local alignments of value, of interest, This is a true local alignment, local Smith-Waterman alignment of the local variety, which didn't have the kind of matching camers that blast, the original BLAST would have required. So it didn't have these identities that were needed. But what it did have were multiple, somewhat smaller seeds so maybe three of them that were close to each other. So none of these, so these are still essentially identities or things that would show up in the neighborhood search, the Kamers um, that uh, would match, but not none of these are, are as big a K as the original blast required. Okay, so original blast would miss these two intervals. It wouldn't call that an, an HSP, and therefore it wouldn't realize that this query sequence was related uh, to this target sequence or the sequence in the database, but you had smaller uh, seeds that were in there and more than one. So the idea in BLAST2 is that um, you'll, they look for multiple seeds of a smaller K, but that are close to each other. And they don't require that the distances between the seeds be the same. So what what does it mean if you take uh, a distance here? Let's say this is 10 amino acids, and, the, and here it's only three amino acids. And these things are highly similar. So this segment here, I'll call it A, is highly similar to A. This is B, highly similar to B, and C is highly similar to C. If you were to align this whole interval here with this whole interval, making sure that the A is aligned with the A, the B with the B, and the C with the C, what do you have in that alignment that we didn't have previously when we just lined up an HSP? Well, this is only this is 10 amino acids. This is only 3 amino acids. So you've got a gap in there of seven amino acids, right? Or you have seven spaces, anyway. If, if A is going to line up with A and B is going to line up with B, these 10 amino acids uh, and these three amino acids will end up with, a, with seven spaces. So this kind of, um, of alignment uh, or this kind of HSP that's, that's returned has gaps. Okay. So this is gapped um, last. Last two. So the key idea is again, K is smaller. Okay. You no longer look for as long an identity or um, a match that's within the neighborhood. K is smaller, but 
uh, you have to find <coughs> several such k-mers close to each other. Of course, close, that's again, that's sort of an engineering detail, things that people have played with a great deal in BLAST to get it so that uh, BLAST is still fast and still sensitive. And then finally, Uh, three, well, the, the third point about this is that the, uh, the resulting or any resulting HSP has spaces. And so it looks more like, or can have spaces, it looks much more like what you would get in local alignment with something like Smith-Waterman. And people have studied this very carefully and found that gap blast is, in fact, more like local alignment, more like Smith-Waterman than the original blast is, and finds um, uh, associations between sequences that the original blast would have missed. <coughs>